This is our exposure to the ulnar nerve through Guion's canal as well as the carpal tunnel. Specifically, we're going to release the deep motor branch. This is the left hand. I'm sitting on the ulnar side of the hand. You'll see the incision we use is very ulnar to the thenar crease, which I've dotted in here. There are very specific points about this uh, Guion's canal release. And one of them is to go well above the wrist. I think in the past I've missed the opportunity to adequately decompress the ulnar nerve with this antibrachial fascia and the thickened ligaments above the ulnar nerve just proximal to the wrist. The first step in a Guion's release is to open up Guion's canal. The palmaris brevis has been divided. In at least 15% of people, at the distal end, we'll see a cutaneous branch that comes up to the skin of the palm. It's quite large. I'm pulling on that branch, and you can see the skin moving. I want to protect that branch, and it certainly is large enough to be easily protected. Now, this is the fascia I was talking about. You can see the vessel of the ulnar artery and vein below in Guion's canal. And just proximal to the wrist, there's very thick fascia. Look how thick that is. I need to release that in order to get a good decompression of the ulnar nerve in the distal wrist in Guion's area. And as I said previously, I think I've underestimated this release. So a couple of Brunner incisions proximal to the wrist crease in order to adequately decompress here. Now my next step is to sweep the ulnar vessels and the ulnar nerve medially. So I open up Guion's canal, protect that cutaneous branch, and then sweep the ulnar nerve and vessels medially. Everything goes medially. My next step is to feel the hook of the hamate, and I've marked the hook of the hamate with that ink spot. After I feel the hook of the hamate, my next step is to look at the hypothenar muscles, especially to note where I don't see them anymore. This is a special trick here. So I move everything medially, and then I look at the muscle and fascia of the hypothenars. Where I no longer see them is where I'm going to find the deep motor branch. So you actually really have to know where to go on this in order to decompress that deep motor branch. There's the hook, there's the fascia, there's the leading edge where I no longer see it and I open up the hypothenar fascia here on the lateral side. That means as close to the hook of the hamate as possible. Once I decompress this tendinous leading edge, then I'm going to see the deep motor branch. So you actually have to do the decompression before you even really see the deep motor branch, so you really need to have a specific goal in mind as to where to go. We're starting to see the deep motor branch coming into the exposure now and slowly, slowly picking away at the tendinous fascia, at that leading edge, dissecting the hypothenar muscles away from this attachment, and decompressing the deep motor branch. And in a minute, you'll see the deep motor branch now finally visible. There's another tendinous branch right here, sorry, tendinous band right here that I'm going to decompress. And finally, you'll see the deep motor branch. In my experience, this operation is not done well. People miss that deep deep motor branch. There's the deep motor branch, nicely decompressed. Above that, we can see the sensory part of the ulnar nerve. That's easy to decompress. Now I'm just going to show you quickly how we would do the carpal tunnel at the same time. There's that abrupt cutoff of the antibrachial fascia. Distally, I want to go to the V between the hypothenars and the thenars. And that's the little V spot right there. That's where I'm heading distally. I'll be opening the flexor retinaculum on its most ulnar side so that the healing of the flexor retinaculum, any collagen or scar response to that healing will occur way away from the median nerve. So I'm opening up the flexor retinaculum on the ulnar side, going as far distally as that V between the thenar and hypothenar muscles. This is really interesting to see here. Look at this connective tissue between the overlying flexor retinaculum and the median nerve. I think this is what Peter Amadio talks about as an etiology for carpal tunnel, that thickening of the synovium above the median nerve. 
and there's the flexor naculum, and it will heal away from the median nerve, which is tucked well under the flexor naculum. Now I'm going to go to the end of the table. I'm going to absolutely visualize the antibrachial fascia so there's no injuries, no poking around the median nerve. 